Hello everybody and welcome to my studio. It is me Gideon, also known as Gideon's Light and I'm your Creatively Fit Coach. It's been a few weeks since I posted a creative art journal prompt and this week I got right back into it. So I played with my color cube cards as a cue for my color palette for today and I sort of also had a new stencil that I had to try out which was quite a bit of fun. So I decided today's theme and challenge is to try something new and the new that I tried was a stencil on my jelly plate and I created some beautiful papers that I used creating today's beautiful image in my art journal. So if you want to know how I created this little forest scene with collage, then give me a second, I'll turn the camera around and I'll show you exactly how. This is so exciting. It's been a few weeks that I have not worked in my big art journal. So today we're definitely going to get back into it. So that's going to be a lot of fun. But let's set an intention and just get some light into the world going here. And uh, as always, I wish for peace in the world where there's conflict. May we bring harmony where there is pain and discomfort. May we bring healing. And where there's darkness, may we bring light. That is my prayer and intention for today as we play in our art journal. Right, let's put our little light for the world to the side. And then we can begin to play in our art journal. Now today, I got a new stencil on Timo and I have been waiting to play with this little stencil. So if you want to see this unboxing video, just go to my channel and you will find this unboxing video happened a few weeks ago and uh, I haven't had the opportunity to play with a stencil on my um, jelly plate yet so today that is exactly what we're going to do but first before we do that let's use my new color cube and I'm going to draw just some of the first one that we've got here and let's see what that looks like yes that's the front one beautiful and it is autumn here in south africa in the southern hemisphere and this is exactly what the trees are looking like at the moment so that is just beautiful to begin with so we've got a beautiful cobalt blue we've got the cerulean blue we've got a lemon yellow we've got a yellow ochre and we've got is it black or is it brown let's see oh it's dark brown Okay, so I thought it was black. Interesting. Right, so we basically have, according to their names, this is not paint color names. This is more graphic design color names, but we have a dark brown, we have a copper, we have a meadow lark, which is like a lemony yellow, maybe more towards the acidic color, a cornflower blue and a royal blue. And this royal blue looks very violet to me on this side of the thing. So I'm going to select colors according to that color scheme for today. And that's going to be the colors that I'm going to be playing with on my um, art journal today on this page. So I think we need to give this page a nice foundational color. This is just my way to prepare the page for whatever collage we're going to put on top of it. So it also strengthens the paper because as you know by now, this particular art journal is not the best paper. So if I give it a, a sort of a layer of acrylic paint, it makes it stronger for me and it gives me a beautiful unified background. So that is what I'm going to be doing today. So I am going to bring closer my jelly plate. We're going to be do some printing today, but first I'm going to just select these colors 
and when we come back we'll get into this particular page in my art journal i'll see you now right you guys i've got my paint colors out now that i have looked at it carefully so for this sort of a, a royal blue violety color that we have that's probably the sky color i have opted for an ultramarine blue which has definitely got a bit of a violet background and then for this cornflower blue i've gone for cyan blue and this meadow lark I've gone for this fern color, which is a nice kind of acidity yellow. For the copper, I don't have a copper, but I do have gold and some copper. We're going to make a mixture of that. And this dark brown, I've got here yeah, Van Dyke brown and I've got a burnt umber. So I think that will definitely work very well. So that's going to be our selection. And then I also just added a bit of matte black for, you know, sometimes you need a bit of contrast and we might even need a bit of white to lighten some of the colors because on the color chart here on the side, you will notice that we've got the colors that we've selected here. And then you've got the color with a bit of white and the color with a bit of black. So, you know, it's just some options to play with. So we're going to be inspired by that. Now I'm thinking <clears throat> we must mix a nice color. So I'm going to use whatever copper I have remaining here in this little tube of mine. Um, it will probably just be a little squirt. <laughs> here we have it. We have a copper. And this copper is very much more red then uh, the copper that I have on this so I thought of adding the color and that's just that bit of warmth that we have here we wait on my camera see if you guys can see there we go so it's probably just these little warm leaves in the background but we're not going to be painting leaves we're just using this as a color inspiration for the day I've been working with these color cube cards now since I they arrived in my life and I must honestly say it's a lot of fun to work with a, a limited color palette because um, these colors work and how do we know it works because nature showed us that it works <laughs> so it's as simple as that so i'm going to mix this copper and gold together and then i'm going to cover a lot of it up with collage later today we we'll might draw a bit more inspiration from the picture Ooh. so i decided yes that looks nice that looks nice we can add a bit more gold to it um i've decided to now i forgot what i decided <laughs> decided to oh yes to use this as my background color and I'm going to add a bit of medium to it as to improve the fluidity of the paint because I know this paper is very thirsty let's add a bit of medium to it and this is just my uh, acrylic medium matte medium that you guys know I use a lot when I play with my art supplies in my art journal, it's a great medium to do collage with or to create glazes with. I even use it to seal my paintings with. And um, I buy it in the liters because it is such a useful tool as an acrylic artist and as a multimedia artist. So I can really recommend that. Great. All right, Helene, let me get a tissue. Well, kitchen towel, not a tissue. So how are you guys doing? I hope you're doing well. It's been a minute in my world. 
a lot of things has happened since I've last seen you guys. I always have some buckets of water to my left just to activate my brush. I think the last time um, that I created in my journal, I can't even page back now because I stuck it down. We did something fun. <laughs> And uh, then what happened? Uh, then I got sick, unfortunately. But luckily for me, I went for my flu injection. And it's the first time I've decided to use the flu injection. I've never done it before. And uh, last year I got sick because I'm a hairstylist as you know so I'm working in the hair salon and clients tend to be I don't know weird sometimes they've got an appointment for their hair they don't feel well they don't want to I don't know what the reason is move the appointment or they got booked off by the doctor and they think oh well I'm just going to sit there anyway and then they come to the hair salon sick and um, what I don't realize is, number one, I don't have medical aid. And number two, if I get sick, I lose money because I don't earn a salary. I work for myself. So please, people, if you're sick, just move your appointment until you're feeling better. And then you come and do your hair and you enjoy it. <laughs> and you don't share your germs and your viruses. <laughs> I don't understand. But anyway each to their own. Maybe they're not aware that they're sick yet. I think a lot of people are in denial. <laughs> when they get sick, they tend to think, oh no, maybe I just have a bit of sinus. It will blow over. And then they don't realize they're very contagious. And you know, unfortunately, then three days later, I sit with it. And in my case, it tends to want to go into my lungs very easily. So you know, anyway, not wanting to talk about disease, but so the good news is I did go for my flu injection to sort of just build my immunity and to prepare for the flu season here in South Africa. And I just got it in on time because a week later, after feeling better, uh, as fate would have it, there was a number of people that was running around at our business that had some kind of flu and I picked up on it and yeah but the good news is in the end I only spent like a week or so to get better and I feel that the injection helped me and um, yeah so I'm very grateful that it wasn't like last year a whole month out of my operating time in the studio and at the hair salon so I'm very grateful for that. Right. Yes, and I think then we also had a few deliveries, a few public holidays, and a few other things, family responsibilities. I had some dentist appointments, and, you know, all these things happened. And I also had my Patreon uh, focus, which was um, all about lotus flowers. I had some big work on that that I had to do. So that was a lot of fun. I did enjoy that. Okay, so now that you've got this background down, I want to play with a bit of charcoal. And let's just do... Oh, <laughs> experimental. Let's do some beautiful line work. I always forget that you can play in the wet paint before you let it dry and then when I want to do it I sort of do it too late now I did expect the charcoal to make more of a mark but it's okay that paint there was naughty like I said most of it's going to get covered up anyway so it's cool okay I blessed myself with some real charcoal sticks as well. I love drawing with it on my canvas to just get my orientation and to activate my space a little bit. 
that's nice let's see what other marks we can make i've got this little tool here so what would be different linear lines let's do linear lines let's do like little straight lines like this so remember your creative practice is all about playing experimentating <laughs> experimenting <laughs> you guys have got to laugh at me sometimes with my dyslexia some new words are being created so as the paper is drying or the paint is drying it makes less and less of a mark that's interesting just to give it a bit of a textural background some of it might pick through um, later when we do the collage because I'm going to print some papers today on my jelly plate and um, yeah, the theme for today I think I sort of have a theme every now and then um, that's called try something new so today is try something new uh, I haven't played with a stencil for a long time so I think that is the something new that I'm trying today I think that's nice okay so what would be different uh, contrast is a way to do things so linear lines thinner lines might be interesting let's do thinner lines closer together more horizontal because the other lines was thick and vertical so using the design principle of repetition and contrast that's one way to try something new that you haven't tried before on your badge okay let's repeat that maybe here before the paint completely dries okay so i think our play time has run out of this paint yes the little wet section that's cool okay i think i'm going to leave it at that for a start on our page so i'm going to let this dry i'm going to put this aside and i'm going to get my jelly plate print out and i've got some paper ready so let's do some jelly plate printing with this stencil and see um, what we can create today so i'll see you guys now awesome i've got my jelly roll plate here it's been a minute since i've played on my plate in fact this morning when i prepared i still had some gold left on my plate and i put some cobalt blue on top and i did a beautiful clean pool of all the paint that was left on my plate so you can see through it which means it's clean but you can see my plate is old <laughs> It had some beating. It's my first plate that I've ever played with, so it has been a learning curve, and uh, I'm definitely saving for a bigger one that can maybe fill this um, space. But anyway, let's get into it. I think our first layer can be dark, so let's start with this um, burnt umber. And let's just get a nice juicy oh, I'm making a mess let's get a nice juicy layer down I also have my brayer and you can see that also has a bit of color on it and just get another kitchen towel so I can wipe this business here we go okay so let's get a nice juicy layer down here of this dark burnt umber 
I should actually get a bucket of water for my stencil so I can dump it in there between prints let's wrap this off there we go and I'm going to place my stencil here in the center and let's first get just this is ordinary office paper copying paper and I'm just going to use this paper to pick up the excess paint in between those little designs and the plate has to warm up but as we work on it the plate will warm up okay there we go there's a lot of intricate design cutouts here on the stencil now that already is also a print that you can play with later now I'm just gonna keep another page handy now the one thing about printing is you suddenly run out of space everywhere <laughs> Uh, I think what I'm going to do, because this is also a print that can be made, I'm going to pick up my stencil and I'm going to put it on here. Like that. I think I must put a tissue on top. My surface is a bit uneven here. Here we go. Oh. I'm not a professional printer, people. I'm just playing. <laughs> I want this to dry, so by the way, so that I can put a color on top and do a nice print, but I don't want to waste the paint that's on the stencil already. There we go. So that's a nice ghost pattern. So I'm going to continue to use this badge for my ghost little, what should we call it, reprints. I'm going to leave that to the side while my stencil sets. So I've got to give this a minute to dry. That's where you need a cup of tea. Because if I'm going to put wet paint on this now, it's going to smear when I roll it in. So we've got to be patient. You can also use your hair dryer, of course. Just use it on the cold setting. So I'm going to do that. I'll pause the video and do the air dryer so I don't make you deaf. I'll be right back. Okay, so I used my hair dryer on that layer. And it looks ready. You can just touch it. Yes, nothing's coming off. Okay, awesome. So now with this brown, I think this blue can just be beautiful. So that would be like the cornflower blue, which in my case is just cyan blue. And for this layer, you don't want it to be too thick. But you do want a nice thin foam of <coughs> excuse me color i tend to either put too little or too much so let's see that's definitely too little <coughs> it is a learning curve people it's a trial and error kind of thing so let's get this going you can always roll off on the sides <coughs> But you want a nice juicy thin see-through layer of wet paint in order to pick this up successfully. Okie dokie and we need a fresh paper. Come on paper! 
there we go and then you just apply some pressure but you also want this to really soak in I'm going to get a clean tissue so I can apply some pressure to this and then you can just let it sit for a minute so that the paint has a chance to adhere to the thirsty paper and I always make sure that I go around the sides really well because that edge has to be able to really come away from your plate now this office paper you can feel it gets cool because the paint that is wet is now soaking into the paper so don't try to pull this immediately because your paper will tear and you will leave a scab on your jelly plate I've learned to make sure that this layer is really really dry before I pull it off <clears throat> when you look at these videos where they work on the plate and they put the paper down and they pull it away there's been a pause either in between they've edited that way or there's a lot of paint on the plate which means that you can immediately pull the paper off because there will still be paint on the plate so you know learning um, how much paint needs to be on your plate and how wet the paper is um, when you can pull it off and when you can't pull it off that is the challenge about jelly plate printing that you sort of need to get accustomed to and also then the difference between a new plate and an older plate my plate has seen some <laughs> battering as you can see a new plate can be very sticky so if your paper is weak and it's slightly damp from the paint you might have a scab or a tear and that is literally when paper stays behind when you pull it off the plate so that can be annoying so do give yourself a bit of patience I think the first time I worked on this plate um, none of the pulls worked for me it always stores so it was frustrating I started thinking that my paint doesn't work that the plate doesn't work so it was frustrating but I persevered and then I finally figured it out for myself after watching a thousand and one videos and doing a thousand and two prints so it's still something that I'm learning and developing so I enjoy just the simple prints for now it's a lot of fun so we'll get into our printing as soon as this paper dries so I'm going to give it a blast with my hair dryer and when we come back I'll pull this off and show you guys and then we'll go into fast production mode with our colors so I've blasted this paper now with a bit of medium hot air not on full heat setting just and also on a medium speed just to make sure that the paper has a bit of support and it dries very nicely on this side of the surface which means the paint had an opportunity to stick to the paper and wants to let go of the gel plate so all of our fingers crossed you can see I even blew out my candle because of the hair dryer now you want to there we go sort of start in a corner and allow the edges of your paper to release the paint and what I like about working with the gel plate on a perspex board is it helps me to keep my plate stable so I can pull my paper off now don't rip your paper off but you do want a steady kind of pull a 
steady tension and then suddenly at the end there we go we have a beautiful release we only had one small little scab there i'll remove that now that's what a scab looks like but we have our first print for the day yay so we've got some lovely textures from our stencil we've got the dark brown that brings out that contrast and the beautiful cerulean blue at the back we will try some more it is like i say a journey so i'm going to not talk to you guys so much i'm gonna really speed things up for you and i'm gonna do a printing frenzy and really get into the flow using these colors and then when we come back we will have some papers to put in our art journal all right i've done some printing here i've got a few mediocre ones <laughs> that's you know maybe a nice background nice texture but there's no clear image on it this one as well interesting sort of ghost print and this one as well so i do think we need a little bit more sort of oomph on these so i'm sort of going to plan around what we already have on the background and then try one more time by getting a bit of definition on there so I think for this one, it's all very dark. So I think I want to go for a very light mixture of this. And I like to then sometimes use my brush um, just to mix the paint on the canvas as you see me before. Let me just get this clean. There we go. Okay, so let's use this fern green, but let's get the white on there. Get some white going so that it's a bit lighter there we go that's probably too much but i want a nice juicy layer so that when i put the stencil on top of it that i have a very nice um, thick juicy layer that can come through the stencil and give me a very nice pattern relief here we go so you don't always have to use your brayer in fact you can also use brushes and i like this smear of page because it sometimes creates beautiful what should we call it um unfortunately my stencil i forgot it on that other piece of paper and then it got stuck so i had to run to the bathroom and wash the stencil but i already had paint on the printing pad here the jelly plate so i decided to just slap a piece of paper on it and do a nice clean pull of this beautiful yellow which is fine so it will clean everything that was on the plate and it will give me a nice background so that's okay we have to be adaptive as artists right <laughs> respond to the moment but that gives me a beautiful light background I like it okay cool so let's get our white here we go and oopsie daisy let's put some fern green down here we go and our brush here we go mixy mixy <laughs> we live and we learn here we go nice light juicy layer with more texture I have another 
drag off page stuck to my now we have our stencil ready this time and now I can come in with this darker base on top of that and because there's already a few layers of acrylic paint on there um, the paper is also stronger and I find acrylic paint wants to be friends with acrylic paint they are neighbors right okay Let's see, awesome, yes, now we've got a bit of definition and texture, which is nice, so that can dry, and then we have this ghost print, so I'm going to add some, um, yellow ochre, on top of that, just going to use my brush to, apply some color here nice rich layer and I'm going to do something in the opposite way I'm going to now pull my um, what do you call this thing stencil off and that should leave a nice reverse print of what we have on this <coughs> plate now okay that looks nice let's use our roller to just dispense the paint really nicely fill in all those gaps yes we like yes yes we like okay now I'm going to pull my design off and I'm going to put it on this one like so and because that's so nice and juicy I don't have to wait a long time because I'm not going to pull all the way to the um, core that's interesting we have a very nice pattern almost like what the leaves does in this um, reference material we have a nice dappled texture there okay cool we have I'm gonna go ahead with my inspiration that I had now of using these papers as a way to sort of collage and sort of in an abstraction way create this image of the forest and looking up through the trees through the yellow leaves to the blue sky so that's what I'm going to try to create with what I've printed today so